today I'm going to be talking about all the books that I read in May. I know this is like a bit of a delayed wrap up but I'm getting it up this month and the goal of mine was to actually post a wrap up every month of the year and I can't miss out on May. So you'll see I have a different setup. This is my special edition corner and this is my new fairy light wall that I put up in my room. So now I have multiple filming locations. So let me know how you guys like the new background. I'm just very excited to have it set up. I feel like my book room is finally coming together and I just posted a book reorganizing video last week. So go check that out because that was super fun to film and my vision is coming to life. I just need to get a chair and a rug and then I'll be ready to just be cozy in this room and stay here all the time and just read books. So it's going to be wonderful. I also had been contemplating for a long time if I wanted to get the like Stanley Tumblr simple modern version and Tori from Tori Between Pages she convinced me and my mom's gonna get a matching one so we're gonna match and just be like water tumbler girls that match and honestly I think I drink more water from this thing fueling me through this video. I did only read nine books in May, so I don't have too much to wrap up today. I will say I feel like in the past I would always like combine month into one and wrap ups would be so exhausting to talk about because I just wouldn't have enough time to say what I wanted about each of the books, but but I only have nine books so I can talk a lot about them. And let me show you guys, usually when I'm filming these I look at my journal because that's like the easiest way for me to like see what I have to talk about. So this is my May wrap-up page. Isn't she so cute? A little sneak peek of what we're about to talk about. So the first book that I read is As Good As Dead by Holly Jackson and this is the third book in the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series and this series follows Pip who does a project digging into a disappearance and a murder that happened in her town a few years ago and she doesn't think that the person that was persecuted was actually responsible for the crime and so she takes on like her senior thesis in high school to discover what happens but she's digging up some things that don't want to be dug up and scary things start happening and I love Pip and this is the third book in the series and it honestly got so intense and went places that I didn't think it was going to go and I loved it. I just feel like the series was so well executed. I listened to the audiobook. The audiobook is brilliant. It's like multi, um, multi narrator and it has like sound effects and stuff like that because some of the portions of the book are told in podcast format and interviews and things like that. And I just could not stop listening. I devoured the series on audio. If you want like a fun YA mystery series to read, like it was honestly perfect for reading on audiobook. So I highly, highly suggest this one. It was five out of five stars. I love Kip. I love Ravi, who is the suspected murderer's um, brother and Pip and Ravi like team up and they make such a good team. I also just saw that there's actually a TV show and the person that they casted for Pip is... Um, she played a need in Wednesday and I love that actress and I think she did such a good job in that role and I she's just like the perfect Pip to me and I just like really admired Pip's headstrongness and how she really was truly like trying to get to the bottom of this case and there were honestly a lot of twists and turns that I did not see coming at all and this last book just like really brought everything full circle in a way that like clearly it was planned from the first book but you just had no idea where I was going to go. It was just a brilliant reading experience and I love the series so much. Next I read Business or Pleasure by Rachel Lynn Solomon and this was an e-arc from that galley so yay to me for like trying to increase my ratio even though I keep requesting books so it is what it is. I had read Weather Girl by this author last year and loved that one. It had a good Jewish representation and had good um, body positivity representation except especially for the male main character because usually in romance books sometimes the description of the guy can be like always oh, like has a six-pack abs and is the biggest ding-dong you've ever seen in your life and I love that don't get me wrong I love the fantasy of it but it was also nice to have a book where like the female main character finds the guy like incredibly sexy and he has a dad bod because you know what women are into dad bods 
they are. So we need, you know, more dad bod representation and more. Sometimes it's good to have realistic body expectations for both the men and the women. But I still, I still love a good ripped man with a six pack and a huge ding dong in a, in a romance book. You know, there has to be some, some fantasy element to it, I guess. <laughs> So in this book we have Chandler who is a ghostwriter and she really wants to, you know, be making progress in her writing career but she is kind of like stuck in this like writing celebrity memoir phase and but she's very well known for her ghostwriting abilities. And then we have Finn who is a has-been C-list actor and he wants to write his memoir and so he hires Chandler basically. But before like he hires her they had a one night stand and he she was not impressed with his skills in bed she was like this guy did not make me come like was not was not a good lay essentially and so she's like okay i'm never gonna see him again and now they have to work closely together because obviously to get someone's personal life story and to be able to write as though you are them you need to you know, know their voice and know a lot of details so they end up going on this comic-con circuit together and when he finds out that she actually did not think that he rocked her world Finn is like okay like well teach me how to be good in bed and we just love a man that is just like open to learning and giving feedback and I really love this book because I felt like it was such like an authentic and real relationship between the characters like there was so much communicating about like what they liked and didn't like and I love in a romance book when it just feels really real and genuine um so I did end up giving this book five stars and I just I it was just such like a wonderful sex positive book I do think I need to pick up a physical copy of this one and weather girl because thinking about them it just makes me it just makes me smile like they really just were amazing both of the books and I just like feel like it they were able to take it slow like there was just a a build-up of the emotional intimacy as well as the physical intimacy with the sex lessons and I I just thought it was like a great take on those tropes and just like your career aspirations and I don't know I just love when romance novels like really make me feel things and this book it was so good next I read A Light in the Flame by Jennifer L. Armentrout which is the second book in the Flesh and Fire series which is the prequel series to From Blood and Ash so we follow Sarah who has basically been promised to the primal of death from her birth because she's the first princess to be born in the royal line since this like deal was made with the gods and basically she is raised to make the primal of death fall in love with her and then kill him because he can only be killed by the one that he loves and so this is a relationship that is filled with a lot of angst like the the relationship that kind of like develops between them is like really like she didn't know what he was like and really like how this magic works and so she's introduced into this world and I just love Sarah as a main character like she kind of like has this like abandonment complex because she was really raised for this one purpose and then her family kind of ignored her after that and like you really get to see her like come into herself she's very different from Poppy and I love the dynamic between her and Niktos um Niktos is the primal of death like they have such a good dynamic and Sarah is just like so sure of herself even though she like has this emotional baggage and I loved like seeing more of the lands where the gods were and um like more of the background on the primals and the gods and like yes this series is kind of long and winded at some points like there's just a lot of books but I love it it's so much fun and there are some good spicy scenes the tension between her and Niktos like the best thing about the series is just the pure angst between these two characters like JLA in this series especially like is just able to like keep that angst and tension up between them and I do think that this series is kind of helped by the fact that it is only three planned books whereas from Blood and Ash is like six and I think that's where it gets to be a little meandering but this I think the plot is kind of like straightforward and I do think that this series is going to play into From Blood and Ash. My like theory, I don't know if this is confirmed, is that after this third book in the series comes out then the sixth book in From Blood and Ash is going to take the information from that ending and then the, all the characters will kind of converge in the last book if that makes sense. So that's what I'm thinking is going to happen. I love Sarah and Niktos. I love Poppy and Castile as well. 
but I've spent a lot of time with them and like th these characters kind of like don't really have that like established relationship dynamic so there is just like a lot of like back and forth and I think it keeps it really interesting and again the overall plot is great so yeah this this is a good book I did give it five stars because I love JLA and I love this world and I was very very excited for the prequel series and it did not disappoint me. I do have a reading JLA vlog where I catch up on A Shadow in the Ember, A War in Two Queens, and A Light in the Flame coming out soon. Hopefully next week. I've kind of been putting off editing it just because I'm lazy but I do want to post that soon because I did, I did enjoy vlogging my experience for all of the JLA books that I've read essentially. I think I've vlogged all of them so I can link those down below in the caption if you guys are curious and want to watch it. Okay so next I am just going to lump this series together because it doesn't really make sense to talk about the three books separately but I did have other books in between them but I listened to the Inheritance Games, um, the Hawthorne Legacy, and the Final Gambit on audiobook and this is a series about Avery Grahams who is poor essentially she's like living in her car um her mother died and she kind of lives with her sister sometimes lives in her lives in her car sometimes but she's very very smart and she basically gets this call one day or she basically has someone show up at her school and is like hey like you need to come to this will reading for this billionaire like net worth 46 billion or something like that richest guy in Texas and she's like okay weird and she goes and she is the sole like inheritor of the entire fortune with the caveat that she must live in Hawthorne House the mansion for a full year and clearly like everyone is out to get her because she has inherited billions of dollars and really the main players in this book are the four Hawthorne grandsons Nash, Grayson, Jameson, and Xander and these four boys like just you know it's a lot of mind games a lot of twisted mystery and riddles and I would give this overall series a rating of 4.5 stars with the same rating across all of these books I thought that they were so enthralling they were really fun to listen to and to like figure out how the series was gonna go and like what the twist and the riddle was and it was very entertaining there was some romantic tension and a love triangle and I don't know I just had a lot of fun I think Jennifer Lynn Barnes is brilliant for the way that the mysteries um kind of unraveled and like over overlaps between the three different books is obviously very well executed and you really just want to root for Avery because she's this girl that has literally come from nothing to like being one of the richest people on the planet it's like actually insane when you think about it so I really just had a lot of fun with this series the next book I have to talk about is Tempt by Melanie Harlow and this was my first Melanie Harlow book. It is about a plus size woman, um, Millie, who has a one night stand in New York City I think it is with this guy Zach who's a retired Navy SEAL and is older than her and she goes back to her hometown and then she finds out that Zach is actually the long lost father of her ex-boyfriend who she is on good terms with. So he comes to town for his now found son's wedding and they realize oh my god we hooked up and I used to date your son and it's their story and I ended up giving this one like 3.5 four stars and it was just good it was very tension filled good spice like fun small town romance I really enjoyed Millie and the discussions around plus size characters she also um, was a wedding planner and wanted to open a uh, shop for plus size brides which I think there was a lot of really good like potty positivity and like just discussion around you know like being a curvier bride and not really being able to fit into dresses from stores that don't tailor to their needs so as someone that is planning a wedding I feel that you know I feel that so they had really good chemistry and I just I really enjoyed this one I will definitely be reading more from Melanie Harlow in the future and I just thought this was really fun and cute so the next book I have to talk about I have a whole reading vlog dedicated to it is the book that is literally taking the internet by storm and that is Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros and yes I have the first edition with the dragons I literally snatched it up just in time which is good because it's literally selling out everywhere. So Fourth Wing is the story of Violet Soaringale. She is kind of raised by the general of the dragon army in this kingdom where you can go to different quadrants in this war college, Baskyth 
before college and all her life she's wanted to be a scribe like her late father but at the very last second her mother is like no you need to go be a dragon rider and she has this chronic illness which is modeled after the real world ehlers dawn syndrome but of course ehlers and dawn's whoever they are don't exist in this world so it's just seen kind of known she's known as very like weak and frail and that is the disorder where you have like hypermobile joints but it also means that you get like injured very easily and so of course that's not really a great place for like a dragon riding a brutal college where people just like die all the time not a great place for someone that is fragile in that way but she goes to this war college against all odds and you basically need to like pass all these tests and train in order to bond to a dragon and the dragons you know will they have telepathic powers and they will only bond to like the strong humans that they believe worthy and then we have zayden who is the son of the rebel leader and basically all of the children of these rebels were like sentenced to go to this war college because a lot of them just like die in the process of being at this war college and so he's kind of like her enemy because her mother sentenced his father to death so that kind of is setting the scene it's very intense i think this is a planned five or six book series i will be reading everyone the second they come out an amazing surprise ending please just go check out my reading vlog if you want more like play-by-play -play thoughts on this but <laughs> i loved it so much violet and zayden whew, there was some there was some good tension this is an na book so there is spice and it's good spice and overall just like a heart pounding dramatic book obsessed with it i'm literally telling everyone to read it like i'm getting getting my cousins to read it my friends like everyone because it's so good and there's a reason that it is taking social media by storm so i highly 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 suggest this one five stars of course and again more details in my reading vlog and the last book i have to talk about today is x's and o's by amy leah so i read set on you twice last year because it really resonated with me as someone i'm like in the mid-size range that likes to lift and doesn't necessarily like you, you know like is living in a not slim slim body it was really powerful for me just like those discussions on body positivity and body neutrality and it really resonated with me and it's the influencer series so this one is about tara crystal's sister from the first book and she is a bookstagrammer so it kind of this has appealed to a different aspect of my personality because i am a bookstagrammer right so we follow Tara and she is a romance book connoisseur bookstagrammer nurse like from the first book when her fiance moves in to the sister's apartment she like trades spaces with him essentially and is now living with firefighter Trevor and Trevor is like the typical playboy he has a rotation of girls he doesn't really like see himself being in a long-term thing and Tara recently like had an engagement that ended and so she's like what if I go through all of my exes and find my very own second chance romance and we have Trevor here that is going to help her with that mission as they are roommates and so it was just so so fun I loved this and I feel like it really like if you are a bookstagrammer like it will appeal to that aspect of your personality because she's like putting things on her stories and like going live and like talking about her romance books and she's like i have to do a book stack challenge and it's just so fun and relatable i can see some people like thinking that it's cringe because of that but if you are in that sphere it's like totally relatable to your life and i mean literally look at me like i've been doing bookstagram and booktube for five years now so it was really really relatable and i like really appreciated the message of like tara just kind of like wear your heart on her sleeve and kind of getting crushed sometimes because of that because I feel like that is maybe more how I tend to be instead I'm not very closed off of a person I'm very like almost put too much of my emotions in things and then we have Trevor who is just like very closed off but he feels comfortable with her and their relationship blooming is beautiful it's like funny it's like cute and like I just love when there are things that like make me laugh in books and I did use the orange tabs to match the book and I read it while I was on vacation and I just like devoured it in the mountains of maine i went to acadia it was beautiful it was a perfect reading experience and so five stars i will read anything amelia comes out with i just i just think her rom-coms are so good and they are like a cozy little cup of tea for me
All right, guys, that is all that I read in May. Let me know what you guys think of my new setup. Be sure to watch my bookshelf reorganization as well as my fourth wing reading vlog. I will have some fun content coming out in the next few weeks, including my JLA vlog. I promise, I promise I will get it up. And if you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps out my channel. And have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.